Good evening. This time I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Wallingford Inland Wetlands and Water Course Commission to order. The date is Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019. The time is 7.04. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, roll call, Allie. Eileen McKean. Nick Kern. Jim Vitale. David Parent. Deborah Phillips. Aaron O'Hare, Environmental Planner. Okay. Uh, this is the consideration of the minutes for the July 17th meeting. That is the last meeting that was held. Uh, is there any comments regarding the minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve or deny. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that the regular meeting, that the minutes of the regular meeting of July 17, 2019 be approved. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Call for a vote. Allie? Uh, yes. Nick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Yes. Okay, going on to old business, application A, 19.8.1. Uh, this is on the record just that, that uh, Aaron and I went over this application and it uh, was decided that it could receive administration approval and therefore it was granted on 9.4.19, September 4th. New business, uh, uh, we don't have any new business from the previous meeting we have. Some new, uh, we have some applications for new business going forward, but I'd like to address one of them right now. And this is for, uh, it's listed as application A19 9.1, but they're requesting administration approval. It is, it is a, a pool in a residential area. Uh, Aaron has been out there. Can you give us some information, Aaron? Yes, it's, um, application for it's the address is 10 Pogmore and it's an in-ground pool with a small surround and the and fencing and all the activity would take place uh, 30 30 uh, minimum 30 feet from the wetland so most of its 40 40 or 50 feet from the wetland they had to apply because they were within the 50 foot upland review area uh, I went out there today, it's level, I see no reason why administrative approval wouldn't work for this. Um, any uh, questions, commissioners? No, I have none. Okay. Aaron, um, my concern is that where the spoils from the, the water spoil is going to be dumped when the pool is back flushed or the chemicals, they clean it. There's, there's a cycle, a filtering cycle that takes the spoils from the pool and discharges them. Where are we going to have them go into the wetlands? No. Um, this is, I don't know the exact answer to that. I did recently actually download the DEP swimming pool regulations. It's about yay thick. Um, all, this pool would be handled just like all the other pools. I, I will get you a definitive answer next time. I know they don't have to get a specific permit from the DEP. I'm not asking them for a permit from DEP. I'm asking you, what are we going to do about the, uh, how is the pool going to be maintained and backflushed? Where, where is this system going to be pumped to? I can't answer that question. I do know that the only time it's an issue is when the pool, if when a pool is drained completely dry. But I was told these days pools are kept full. In modern times, they're kept full over the winter. So I don't know the answer about the circulation, but I know all pools have that circulation. So this one wouldn't be standing alone in that regard. I'll get you that answer next time. Okay. That is an interesting thought. I I'd never given it much thought. But if you're back flushing. Uh, you're back flushing, uh, you're filtering the water and the water is going out, but the water has got plenty of chemicals in it for the purpose of swimming. But if you can swim in these, this chemical infested water 
and then we pump it out and in this case it would probably head right towards the wetland in this case being uh, within 30 feet of it. Uh, it it does open up a broader question like if you're not going to put it in the backyard which would trickle down eventually into the wetlands where are you going to put it um i could find out if it's allowed to go into like in a hose you know go into the uh the storm system in the road. I don't know how the town would feel about that for their stormwater system in the road. It may satisfy it, the fact that it's in a biofilter in the, uh, the rest of the Upland Review area. Maybe you can find it through DEP what their, what their feeling is on the backwash if it's satisfactory. Okay, I'll report next time. Nick? Dave? No. Debbie? No. Does anybody see any reason not to grant administration approval for this person? I don't see any, so go ahead, Aaron. All right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Uh, 12 Old Colony Road, Old Colony Road Properties. Is, is this the uh, True Blue site? Well, yes and no. It's owned by an entity called Old North Colony Properties who also own True Blue. So, yes. Okay, so we have the application here. You've been working with them on um, doing the correction of this thing or this whole what this application is about. Yes, it's. You'll notice it's. This property is also listed below under violations. They ha they have a. They're currently under a notice of violation uh, that was issued in June, I believe. And they've been working with me since June. Commissioner Kern was out there twice with me. Um, and they've been moving along and correcting, they had a, a, they're correcting their violations. Now they're to a point where they've cleaned all the material away. They've fortified the slope where it had, had uh, gone over, where the drainage had gone over. So now they're in a position to plant grass seed but they had intended for the drainage to go over the slope overland, disperse it overland over about, I don't know, 400 feet, just gradually overland down the slope. And that's not uh, really um, advised because it may cause, it would cause erosion down the slope. So they said, okay, well, what are we gonna do with it? And I said, just let's drain it. And Commissioner Kern was there, let's drain it into your existing basin. You've got a big basin there, let's shunt it into that. And they said, okay, but they, it's in our jurisdiction. That's why they needed an application. Why, why do they need an application? They need an application because in order to make that stormwater from the western side of their stockpile area go into that basin, it's got to go route along the edge into, into the existing basin. It's going to be 15 feet wide. Um, they have the drawing, it runs down the, uh, if you look at the map that was attached to their application, it runs down the entire um, side, the western side. All right, so, so, uh, uh, but they're, they're taking corrective action to the violation. Oh yeah, they're almost done with the corrective violations, and, but the reason we want to I recommend moving forward with the strainage swale is then the whole area that was disturbed can be seeded and grow in before the winter. Okay. All right. So there's there's nothing really to discuss on that. Next, if they've done everything on this, they this should uh, next month be pretty satisfactory then. Oh, I should, yes. But I should say that the, the map that was handed out with the application was requested by the commission in the notice, when we were addressing the notice of violation, we asked them to produce a survey map. They had Ross Page of Winterborne Services go out there in August and early September and take the elevations of uh, the, the map, the site plan that was approved by planning and zoning uh, in 2009. And then she also took elevations of existing elevations that okay, showed where the fill was all today. That, what does all that mean? Well, that showed how much over they were. That showed how much over they were and how much encroachment there was. There was right. about 22 feet of encroachment into the jurisdictional okay. area. All right, but they're, they're correcting the violation. Cor 
Yes. They're correcting violation. Things is in order here. This is fine for next month then. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, going into violations. Okay. This uh, I know Aaron's got uh, a list a few of them there. Um, do you want to give us a short uh, discussion on them, Aaron? Notice of violation, 1988 yes. East Center Street. For just let me say for all of them, the um, except for the last one, number seven is a, is not a notice of violation. But for one through six, all of those notice of violations, I would ask for them to be affirmed tonight that the violation remains in place. Um, I'm working with all of them, and we can talk about them one by one. But generically, all of them need to remain in place okay. for the time being. All right, go ahead, number one. Okay, 988 East Center Street. Uh, my environmental planner report went out in the packet. I trust everybody got it. Um, they started, as, as you might remember, we, we approved that on July 17th. Uh, they moved forward with the remediation work. They started the remediation work. This is in front of planning and zoning at the next planning and zoning meeting. So they were cautioned just to do the remediation work, not to go ahead with all their proposal, you know, awaiting action by planning and zoning, but to do the remediation work in the back involving the wetlands and the two catch basins. So they put their, they had a bond, they put their bond down. Um, they started to work there. I've been out there several times. Um, I showed, had pictures that went out with the environmental planners report. I asked, had them put a few more hay bales in. Um, and that was, things came out pretty much as planned. I've been talking to David Willard. He's pleased with it. He's going to start the planting. It's going to be seeded and planted this fall. Um, or, or at least that's the intention. And in my environmental planners report, if, if you read the uh, recommendations, I would like the commission to um, affirm that you would like it planted this fall. That I, I don't want to see it go uh, bare till next uh, spring. And if you agree with that, maybe you could affirm that order to be planted this fall. Okay. Um, I, bad news is, well, two, the two things I'd like to check. They didn't remove the fill around the old oak tree, that large oak tree. They need to remove that fill. Um, and then the oak, half of the oak tree died. But I feel that maybe if they remove the other part of the fill, that the rest of the tree could be saved. Uh, that's on the Tilcon property. Okay. All right. So, uh, commissioners, is to take a vote to confirm the notice of violation still in effect and that um, we would like to have the uh, plantings uh, done this fall rather than go over the winter uh, uh, without them being planted. Do you want in the placards out there? No. I don't see, I, I mean you can put them out there, but where are you going to put them out? Who's, who's going to take advantage of the placards? And where are you going to put them? I was just thinking of, you know, workers that are there, they might feel like dumping some sand out in the back or something like that. Well, it's, it's, I'm sure he's not against putting placards. It's probably on the tree that might be dying, though. That doesn't seem to make the best sense. But that's the area you're post. talking about. You know. usually put them on a post. Four by four. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I mean, it wasn't, we didn't ask for that before. Why don't we don't have to. That's an idea. Um, if you want to ask him to put it up and see how he makes out with it. But anyway, there's a motion here, right? Or not a motion. I'm looking for a motion to confirm the notice of violation stays in effect and they get the plantings done this fall. And remove fill around the tree? Remove fill around the tree. Okay. Mr. Chairman, make a notice. I make a motion that the notice of violation 988 East Center Street Benchmark Land Development LLC uh, remain in effect that the commission desires that the, pl uh, the plantings be done uh, during the fall and that the sand around the oak tree be removed. Second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? I, Aaron, I just have one question. Somewhere I saw that uh, the abutting property has fill put on it. Is this from this property? Something about Tilcon has put... Which abutting property? The Tilcon's property. The, the, uh, oh, 
Yeah, that's around the oak tree. The oak tree is growing on Tilcon property. All right, so the Tilcon violation that you used to talk about is the oak tree that you want to get the material away from. Yes? Yes, but I, I call it the benchmark violation, but yes. It's on Tilcon property. Okay. Yeah, Benchmark did it. Now, can they go on Tilcon's property and remove that material without? Yes, they. We had them get a letter from Tilcon okay. in August. They sent a letter, and then Tilcon said, "Yes, whatever needs to be done, we okay. approve that." Yeah. All right, that's all. Any other discussion? Call for a vote. Debbie. Yes. Dave. Yes. Nick. Yes. Allie. Yes. Yes. Number two. Um, Application A-16, 530 Church Street, Joe Minari. Okay, a copy of a letter that I wrote to, to Joe Minari, Timberwood Homes, dated September 19, went out in the packet. And the good news is that um, everything looks good, erosion control-wise. He was down, he had done some corrections, he down, was down to three gullies on the side of the the uh, storm basin, and he remediated them, and they're holding up. So, um, as I say in the letter, you've got to take out, you please take out all sill fencing on the property. We don't need that black plastic all over the prop, all over the um, development, the subdivision development. Let's take that out. And some of the placards, either he never put them in, or somebody's removed them, so I've asked him to install some of the placards. Okay. Here again, uh, Dave, we're going to request a, a motion that the violation stays in effect and these conditions would like to be taken care of. Uh, Mr. Chairman, make a motion that notice of violation A16-2.1530 Church Street, <coughs> Joseph Maneri, remain in effect and that the <coughs> uh, conditions uh, set forth in a letter to Mr. Maneri dated September 19th, uh, 2019, be complied with. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Second in the discussion. I have a, 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 a brief discussion. Um, as you go up 68 Hill, between the sidewalk and the top of the ridge, it looks like nobody's maintaining that. Is that state highway property, or is that... Uh, it's not mowed, it's not, you would th usually you see that the lawn is mowed all the way to the sidewalk. It's not the case in this application. This oh. Point. You've never noticed it. Uh, no, I am thinking about it now. I do know what you mean. Uh, before you turn into the, just before you're going to turn in. Actually um, on both sides of the uh, turn in road. Primarily on the, yeah. on the one. I mean, it's not a violation as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's not an erosion. Yeah. It's, it's oh. just an item of, of interest. It is curious. Any other discussion? All for a vote. Allie? Yes. Nick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Yes. Okay. Three. Uh, notice of violation 52 Hanover Street, Quinnipiac River. Mary Jane Webster Legace. All right. That's this the property where 34 trees were cut down, um, and uh, I can't remember exactly, but something like 30 trees were put back, saplings were put in, and shrubs were put in there, and also a bunch of willow plugs from the NRCS folks, and that planting was done a while ago. I, I call him up periodically to remind him to water, the owner to water, because, as you may know, in your own gardens, we've had a very dry September. So I said, keep on watering that sandy soil, and these things have to get established. We don't want to lose any. And that's why this I feel the notice violation should stay in effect over the winter to see how everything makes it through the winter. But he did a really good job. He planted everything himself, except for one plant that I planted. <laughs> and um, so he's been cooperating. Okay, uh, then looking for a motion, just to, just uh, for the record, leave the notice of violation in effect on application three, number three. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that notice of violation 52 Hanover Street, Quinnipiac River, Mary Jane Webster Legas remain in effect. Second. Second. Uh, 
Any discussion? All for a vote. Allie? Yes. Nick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Yes. Okay, number four. Um, uh, we've already, well. The, Are you Who seconded? Debbie. Debbie. Thank you. Okay. Okay, number four. Notice of violation 12 Old Colony Road. Uh, this is where we're looking to uh, reiterate that the notice of violation stays in effect. And I think we have enough documentation, documentation that's going on. So just the notice of violation stays in effect. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that notice of violation, 12 Old Colony Road, Old North Colony, Prop, Ro, Old North Colony Road Properties, LLC, uh, remain in effect. Second? Second. <clears throat> motion made and second. Any discussion? All for vote. Allie? Yes. Nick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, is 1245 Hinces property? Okay. N number five, notice of violation 1245 Old Colony Road. Now, this is the, Aaron's requesting in being in conference with uh, the law department that we want to, uh, to reiterate the notice of violation is in effect. And uh, we've been working this with this person um, since July. And uh, a little was done in July, but then promised to have an engineer with a survey map um, long before now. Aaron would like to get this thing stabilized for the winter. Uh, therefore, I think we should instruct her to uh, lay down some kind of boundary line and through using maps and create out our own line that we want the guy to pull the material back from, or the applicant. So I don't know if that's a two-step motion or a two-step process or a direction, but that, no, that's the answer. Well, the two steps is one is notice the violation. Okay, we'll do that. And the second one would be uh, we're instructing Aaron to do X, Y, and Z. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you would like to put the notice on the, let me just paraphrase something. If you want to put the notice on the land records, which I'm not saying you have to, but if you wanted to, then you should make findings on the notice of violation that was issued June 4th. I have a copy of it here to say, you would say something like, you were issued this notice of violation June 4th, you, haven't com you have complied with some of our orders, but you haven't complied with, and you could list what he hasn't complied with. That would be a piece of this. Or you could wait till no November 6th and do that. Um, well, okay. We, we certainly, on some violations, we, we would like very much to be on the land records. If you think this should be on the land records, then I think you need to either send us a memo saying this is what should be in the motion to put this on the land record violation. Okay, so for next So meeting. next month, rather than try and just bounce all these ideas around, we can just re keep the notice of violation in effect, and we'll, we'll do that for next month. Okay, so you're going to direct me to, to do the um, mapping, and then if you could also do, um, order uh, the owner to follow staff's direction after the rough mapping is completed or something to that effect. Okay. You got that, Dave? Has there been any activity out there, Aaron? Not, oh, I, I wouldn't know that. You mean like well, did you go junk place? activity, junk and stuff? No, is there any activity out there? Has he done anything? Of, what? He hasn't done anything since the last time I asked him to put in a silt fence on July 16. Right. So is he making an attempt to do anything, or he's just no. walked away from it? No, he's waiting for the survey map. He does have a, a retainer. Uh, Bob Emmente was retained um, about a month ago. And so we're, we're all waiting for the survey map to be completed. And where is that going to take us? Well, one thing, it helps with enforcement because on the, it'll tell us where the southern boundary line is because some of the stuff is over, I feel, over onto another person's property. So that's one thing. It'll tell us where the 100-year floodplain line is and the floodway is. That's really planning that's in the flood manager's department, which is a town planner. 
then she can do enforcement regarding that. Get the stuff out of the floodway. Absolutely no stuff in the floodway. Um, and really you can't keep anything in the 100 year flood plain unless you do compensatory flood storage. So basically all that has to come out too. Okay. For us, it's our 50 foot boundary of the wetland jurisdiction. But, but either way, when winter comes and it starts flooding, that dirt's gonna go all over the place. So we gotta get it all out of there. All right, let's, let's get. Let's uh, get, let's get, let's get. Notice of violation. Let's, let's. Uh, Mr. Read Chairman, it. I make a notice. I make a motion to notice a violation, 1245 Old Colony Road and Quinnipiac River, uh, Jersey Patel, uh, remain in effect. Motion made. Is it seconded? Second. Any discussion? Vote. Allie? Yes. Nick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Yes. Okay, now I think we need a, a motion to instruct Aaron to... Uh, okay. To find a, a boundary line to uh, remove. Wait, find a boundary line. Is that on uh, what side is that? West or? Uh, it's boundary it. line to remove the material that's that she feels that's in the upland review area. Are we talking about upland review area, correct, Aaron? Yes, it's. I have wording in my environmental planners report, page two. If you have a copy, or if you want this copy, what does it say? Uh, um, do, hold on. <laughs> wow. Direct, direct owner for the commission to direct owner violator to complete a rough determination of the location of the hundred-year floodplain boundary using FEMA mapping, the existing Burnham site plan, aerial images, and other map information. And then, using that approximation, determine in the field which areas of unpermitted filling and stockpiling currently occur within those boundaries and take immediate action to remove or relocate them now before winter weather arrives. Well, then, then that motion will be this whole page, this whole back page. It's number one. Well, it's, it's one on page two. Just make reference to that. Okay. <clears throat> and then to see the area would be number two on page two. Wait, you won't. One and two on page two. Okay, gotcha. And this is one twelve forty-five. And and Mr. This is, okay, okay. So, so we're going to do those. You want those two paragraphs, right? Yes. Going once. Yes, the, the right. two items. Okay, okay. That's what I want. First two items on okay. page two. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I make a notice. Um, I make a motion that the environmental protection, that the environmental planner uh, be directed to comply, uh, to carry out the following steps that are listed in a environmental planner's report dated September 26, 2009, and are shown on paragraph one and two of page two of this letter. Well, could you make that shown on entry number one, just number one? I think, well, you told me you wanted to. Because number two is talking to the violator that the violator is going to put seed in the ground. All right, just leave it number one. Okay, we'll uh, I would modify the motion so that only number one uh, be carried out. Okay, a motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Call for a vote. Allie? Yes. Nick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Yes. Okay, number six, notice of violation, 1103 Oak Colony Road. Uh, this is the, the gas station that's on the corner. Um, that's this, uh, there's a lot of activity going on there. What's, what's going on there? What's the story? Okay, an environmental planner's report went out in your packet. Let me just get it out. I'm having a little bit of trouble finding it, but let me... Um... Well, I have it right. Anyway, I love okay. it. Basically, I think uh, Nick and I have been involved in it a, a little bit. Uh, we met with um, 
some foreman of the gentleman out, out on site, and he was agreeable to do uh, many things uh, to try and get the property back to a point of where it was before. Now, we're not sure we, he got to that extent because behind the building we still think there's more material in there. We were looking for an outlet to behind the building to go down uh, Hartford Turnpike Way, but apparently there is no outlet. It flows back, and that whole area acted as a retention pond there. Now, the, um, he's brought some more asphalt in, but Aaron's going to double check to see if it is behind the building. It may be alongside the building. Um, I think, Nick, you worked with the uh, guy on the backhoe or, or identified, we identified a, a line to where the, uh, uh, we wanted the material brought back. Uh, but, but what I've thought about this situation is there's paving done that is on the, it's actually over the property line. It, the paving is, belongs to the neighbor. Now, I'm not sure what our, our position should be. Uh, I don't think that our, our position should be that uh, we've got to instruct them to remove the paving that's on the neighbor, but I think we, it's almost to instruct the neighbor to remove the paving that's in the Upland Review area. I don't know if we have the, the right to, uh, uh, because ironically this gentleman did not place the paving there. So the violation stays in effect, but I don't know about this additional paving that's here. What do you think, Nick? The problem is I don't know if uh, the state of Connecticut has an easement or an agreement with him to dump their stormwater in there where the pond is. So the first thing we have to do is find out if there's been some kind of transaction between the property owner and the state of Connecticut allowing them to dump their stormwater in there as a retention. All right? That's, well, let me... Let me get a little more information here. My understanding is the stormwater runs off Old Colony Road straight into that pond, right? Off the side of the road, or catch basins on the road. Into well, if you follow it, it comes from across the street. It comes from the top of the hill. It comes down that... Right, the, right. Right, goes under the trussle. There's a catch basin right there. It goes under the catch basin, goes across the street, and they, the states come in and cut a pathway from the side of the road west right over to that pond. Okay, it's not shown on the maps, or the survey we have though. I mean, just the catch basin dumps it, but there's not like a special access way or something. It's just the catch basin dumps in there, right? Well, all the stormwater coming down the hill that misses the catch basin goes into this trough and it goes across the street into the brook, into the pond. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, but I don't see what that has to do with the pavement that we're discussing that I think was put there like 10 years ago, right? Is that right? Yeah, about 10 years ago. But the, does the state have an easement for that piece of property? Or If they have one, there's no easement shown on the, the A2 survey that we have. On the Ex Sweet property. Harold Sweet's property. Uh, okay, I could check his... Well, that's who owns the property. Harold Sweet owns that correct, property. Correct, but it doesn't... Sh I'll check it. It doesn't show on the property maps that I have, but I right. could look a little further into the Sweet no, property. Then, then you need to clarify me here and now. Who owns the property where the retention pond is and the illegal asphalt has been paved? Who owns that property? It may be Harold Sweet. It is Harold Sweet. That's what yeah, it's, it's Harold Sweet. So do, does Harold Sweet get a notice of violation for the paving in, a, in his pond? In the well? He didn't do it. Uh, what, Did he? What does that mean? Mr. Khan didn't do it either, but nobody's going to clean it up? Okay, I, I, this is the first time I've heard anyone wanting to remove that. That's, that may be, but that's what, why it's here for discussion. What Mr. Sweet wanted to do... The younger Mr. Sweet, um, Hal Sweet, what he wanted to do was erect a fence there to prevent the gas station owner from, you know, going back in there or people parking in there, what what have you. In, in parking on Mr. Sweet's property. Yeah, he wanted to put a, a fence but on his property line. If you, but if we if we want that material taken out of that wetland, it's already out. What's that? It's already out. All of it. The paving too. No, the paving's still there. But, the, but that wasn't in the wetland. 
Oh, the paving was in the upland review area. The paving was in the upland review area. Right. Right. Well, then, then it's a moot point. I was getting to I thought some of the paving was still in a, in it's a in, wetland area. It's in the upland review area. And they removed all the trees and all the stuff that they pushed into the pond, but they left it there in the pile. They haven't moved it. Now they've added asphalt on top of it. When do they plan on, on removing those piles? They got scattered all over the property. I was there today at 2 o'clock with, with the owner. I met with him today at 2. I saw that small pile. There is one pile of asphalt sitting there by the dirt. Yeah, right near the dirt piles. I asked him, when are you going to move all this dirt away? And he said, well, there's the container. They got a container dropped off. It was there. It was empty. And, you know, I don't know. You know, he's, he tells me when he has the money for a lot of the answers. But let me just report that he did remove some more fill from last month. He keeps on removing a little more. What he needs to do now is find the end of a drain pipe. I've directed him several times, and they said they're going to take a shovel and find the end of that blue-green plastic drain pipe. He said today he's going to do it. Okay. They didn't put in that, that narrow, skinny, depressional storm basin. It's not really a storm basin, but a low area behind the main building. They have to do that. They didn't clean out the rest of the stream. He says, but it flows. I don't need to clean it out, it flows. I said, I'm sorry, the chairman was there, was here, and he wanted you to clean that overgrowth out. It's, it needs to flow better. So he said he would do that. So, but there is some outstanding things, but they have done a lot of work to remediate. They didn't put the grass seed in. I'm getting nervous. The grass seed has to go in before it gets too cold to grow. Well, I'm getting nervous because he's got money to pave but he doesn't have money to remove the materials that are illegally dumped into the wetlands. What does that tell you? He's just looking at you and laughing and walking away. He's not doing any of it. So what do we do with him? Do we let him continue so he can open up for business and they'll never get done? What, what, there has to be some recourse here. You've asked him to do something and he keeps telling you he's going to do it and he's not doing it. He didn't find the, where the end of the pipe is. He didn't remove the stuff we asked him to remove. He took some of it back, but like you said, he didn't do the complete job, so that's not done. But he's got time for two days or three days worth of paving in there to pave the lot. So is there something wrong with this scenario, Aaron? This is, this is, this is probably a better candidate to put on the land records, violations on the land records. But anyway, entertain a motion. We should do that. Of notice of violation. Okay, number one. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that <clears throat> the notice of violation 1103 North Old Colony Road, Enrod LLC, uh, remain in effect. Second. Second. <clears throat> oh, any discussion? Call for a vote. Allie? Yes. Nick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Yes. Okay, number seven. Wait, did you want to talk about what you have to get ready to put a notice of? Notice on the land records. Well, I don't think on, on this one the notice on land records is is I don't think we've got specific that's right. language um, that's needed because you've got to create the violations that aren't um, completed or or still in effect. Maybe um, I was just thinking you affirm the notice of violation. Maybe if you when I write him uh, write, maybe the commission could vote to order him to get the work finished and grass seed in uh, before October 15th so grass can grow before the winter. What? Okay. But I, I, I want, yeah, but I, we're going to have the documentation next meeting when we come in to put the, uh, put the, notice, on, put the notice of violation on record. That's what I'm more interested in. Oh, okay. I was just thinking that at least we, you know, we kicked it around here. He's not here. If we made it a motion, he'd get a letter saying the commission ordered you to put in, to finish up and put in the grassy by October 15th. At least we'd have that. Whether or not he's going to comply is another story. But at least we set it, you know, on the, on the record. You can also go ahead and have it put on the land records, too. Aaron, I just have one more question, and I'm going to back out of this. Can he open the doors tomorrow for business? Yes. 
He can? Well, no. I mean, he's not done paving. It's spots. It's patches of paving. And he's got a lot of work. They were working on the facade today, so he's not ready to open. But yes, planning and zoning let, will let him open, yes. So we have no leverage to get anything done. There's no leverage whatsoever. Okay, that's my question. Next. Well, um, you can, you can write them a letter, Aaron, that says these are the things that need to be done by October 15th. Um, the commission is discussing about putting a violation on land records. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, seven, item seven, A18 1.2, 801 North Colony and 6 Beaumont Road, Patton's Brook. All right. That this is a correspondence, or is this uh, That's a progress a report, that a copy of which went out in your packet. It's from the um, REMA Ecological, all about the, car the river corridor and all the remediation plantings that are going in there, and the progress report on that. They're, and what it says at the end, they said they're doing the plantings, he said September, but now it's October. He'll be doing the plantings of all those shrubs and trees that are listed on the last page. They all go in in October. I, uh, I'm surprised they've done so well with the Japanese knockweed, um, keeping it down. Yeah. What uh, herbicide are they using in there? <sighs> Don't know. What they did do, Jim, they, they cut it, cut it, cut it four times. They cut it four times, and the fifth visit by the landscaper, that's what he hit it with, the chemicals. So you weaken it. You weaken it by cutting it, and then he applied the chemical. When you drive by there, what's the thing that catches your eye about that site? Uh, how naked the corridor is, how empty of trees and shrubs it is. The concrete pipe in a tree is laying on its side. And that too. <laughs> they want to leave it there, though. I, they I want don't the tree the to tree. stay there. Yeah, I think when everything grows up, the tree you won't see the tree once there's plantings around it. But you know, the tree's supposed well, to help somehow. But they, I, I think I commented about the tree anyway, and they said, "Oh no, that's an important part of of, of leaving it there." Right. And I'm not sure. I totally agree with that, but I don't have the degree behind my name. Uh, but they control the knockweed. Well, of course, they were going to swipe every stalk, which I thought was kind of unique. They didn't do that, did they? No, I, th I believe they did. They, they wiped they did. every stalk. They, every every stalk they went through. I think on wiped. that fifth pass, that's what they did. Really? That, I think so. Interesting. So this is the report that the uh, the lady that came here said she'd give us. Then. Yes, she's partners with George Logan, so. Okay. I don't know which of them wrote the report. Um, okay. I think they both signed it. I can take my medicine so I Is it sun up? Okay. Well, we've gone through, I, I don't remember quite having a whole meeting mainly of, made up of violations, <laughs> but, but we've, uh, we've got through them. Anything else to come before us tonight? Not? I, oh. Go ahead. Excuse me. The recording secretary is asking. Directing Aaron? Directing Aaron? No. No, the commission just directed me to do such. It doesn't require a motion. That's what the inquiry is. You just directed, the environmental planner was directed to write a letter to the owners of the gas station property, right. such and such, by October 15th. But it doesn't right. require a motion. That's the question. Right. Okay. Right. Um, I guess the correspondence, Mr. Chairman, I just want to draw attention that the annual environmental conference uh, copies of that went out on your packet. It's November 23rd. It's always very interesting.
it's in Cromwell. It's be held in Cromwell. If you want to register, you can register directly or through my office, either way, and it's reimbursed. Got that, gang? Oh, I do need something else. Excuse me. I do need the Kakawick membership dues. If you could approve expenditure for the membership dues, seventy-five dollars. It's the Connecticut yeah, Association okay. of Inland Wetland Commissions and Conservation Commission. I thought that was pretty standard. We voted that on every year. I think, I think, I think so. I think yeah. I remember doing it. You do remember doing? It? Yeah. 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 And I'll entertain a motion to to uh, pay the dues to Kakuak. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to pay the dues to Kakuak in the amount of seventy-five dollars. Is there a second? Second. Motion made, second. Any discussion? Call for a vote. Allie? Yes. Nick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Debbie? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you going to the conference? Second. Debbie is. Aaron, are you going to the conference? Yeah, yes. On yes. 23rd of November? Yeah. yeah. I usually go. And I'll go. Okay, anything else come before us tonight? Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that the uh, <coughs> this meeting be adjourned. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Thank so you. we lost our leverage.